Okay, the other microphone was not working well, which I've changed it, so hopefully this one works a little bit better now. Um, okay, so I already soldered on the motor, and then uh, I've got heat shrink over here, so I'm going to apply that over there, waiting sure that I uh, making sure I wait long enough for the solder joints to cool before I start to move the heat sink on there because, or the heat shrink on there because it will immediately shrink as you place it over there which I happen to do all the time uh, you, you may notice I'm using an iron <laughs> and not a hot air um, mainly because my hot air is over there, my iron's right here and this is a fairly low temperature iron, but not compared to hot air. It's a bad habit, I know. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I jumped ahead a little bit. I have my um, second set of wires installed. I have my power supply is already set up. Um, I have these guys are all wired up now. And I have two runs of cables. All I need to do now is do a quick test. So I turn the pot all the way to zero, which is going to be all the way to the left, hopefully. <laughs> and secure the motor somewhere um, to stop it from jump starting flying across the room or something. Okay. So I've actually unplugged the tiny G the time. This is a very good idea. Now I'm gonna wire in the cable for this. I'm still running this off the bench for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I was using this movie board before, which, and I really like this movie. And I think Arthur or Arthur, who uh, is is kind of the main guy behind it, and then. Uh, uh, I think Wolfman Jim, who's actually used to work at Freedio. Um, I always used to work at Freedio as well, but I don't know him from there. But it's a great board, and I love the fact that it's got Ethernet. I really don't care um, for a USB. It's just annoying. Not sure why that's not going in there, he says. Should really tin these wires. There we go. Be helpful if they were facing the right way. Uh, this one marked PWM here, so the tilt screen is ever so slightly off. But it doesn't matter because we can count. Okay, and that was the same. I was using the smoothie board and I switched to the Tiny G because I bed Larry. Um, recommended it to me. Uh, and I do like this movie board a lot because it has Ethernet um, and it can just throw it anywhere. But what's nice that I found out about the Tiny G is that it has a little JSON server that runs over serial so you can have it on another machine somewhere else or even run it off something called a Raspberry Pi, which I have no idea what that is. It's not really fond of raspberries, but um, I did mention that I could maybe run the JSON server on the smoothie board to connect the UART of the smoothie board to the Tiny G, but I think that might be a little bit unfair. And I did start a project to convert the Tiny G2 Edge branch over to the smoothie board as well, which might be kind of fun. But anyway, that's the reason I have this here, where I have it here, um, and not mounted to something good. Uh, I wanted to see how it worked. I haven't played with it before. It's, it gives me access to everything on it on the bench. And I can play around with it a little bit more. Upgrade it and stuff. Okay, so PWM is installed. So one of the things that I found out about the Tiny G that's a little different than what I expected, but it makes sense when you think about it, is that you have to reset it every time when you change settings, which makes total sense for this type of thing. And when I initially used it, I was like, I couldn't get the, the Z motor working, the Z motor. Um, 
and because I was changing the settings, it didn't seem like anything was happening. And of course, because I wasn't resing in between. So good tip there, uh, which you'll probably know if you read the manual. Um, so this side is going to go over into the, uh, the speed controller, which is different from the ones that had been set up previously, which were actually um, had a little connector and then the pot was off and this one has a little connected but the pot is soldered in so I'm going to have these all along so I'm going to trim them but I'm actually going to tin them this time clip them to length most burning fingers move all the stuff away from the delicate electronic part great and now I'm going to wire this side up to the speed controller Okay, make my way around the machine again. Now, here's the fun part. Um, so I have the motor wired up. Power is here. I'm just gonna untangle all the cables because motors, spinning things, Wires, never good. I'll move that power supply out of the way. Up onto the bench. Need a wireless mic. I do apologize. I keep sniffing and breathing and stuff heavily. Um, try not to do that. Adjust the microphone. All right. A jumble of crazy wireness here. And the nice thing is, we're actually using the waste board, so I could actually just screw into the into the waste board. But okay, so the pot is turned down. Um, I have somewhat secured the motor into a vise. Um, I'm not going to squeeze in it too much because I don't want the vise to compress the motor, but it's, it should be in there pretty good. <laughs> so let's see if we get chaos. I'm going to plug it in over here and we get a red light and the fan and the spindle is turning. Which I kind of think I remember reading about. So let's try it. Oh. So far so good. Which still so far so good. Oh. I'm going to back it up a little bit. So one of the things that came with this kit was a little fan. And it's a smaller heat sink, so I'm just kind of curious about how hot this thing's going to get. And I'm also curious if my, uh, yes it is, my camera has batteries charged. Apparently it is. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Um, you probably can't see this, so what I'm looking at are... temperatures uh, the large resistor there is obviously quite warm so let's see 27 degrees C but heat sinks themselves they look okay mm, a little bit warm at like 24 degrees at this low speed okay let's try it again there's my hand just to kind of... Oh wait, you can't see that, right? <laughs> so, let's try and get that there. I don't know if you can see it. Take it away. I'll take a few pictures while, while it runs. So you can kind of get an idea too. 27 at low speed, so let's bring it up again.
Okay, so it's full speed. Let it run for a few seconds. Mm -hmm. it seems to be staying around 29 degrees or so. Looks good. Not quite sure what the layout of the speed controller is yet, but it looks like the hot spots are just definitely here on that big big resistor it is designed to take that heat, so but so far it looks good. It's getting a little warm. Her. Nothing earth shattering. I'm not sure if that can be seen or not. I can post it into the blog post. So, yep. Yeah. There's the motor. And nothing smoking yet, so that's good. Not that I expect it to be. Okay, great. Okay, so we ran the test. Um, I powered everything off. Let's make sure the speed controller is unplugged. Or the power supply for the speed controller is unplugged. It is. Um, so here's the back of the board. Uh, one thing I didn't notice that when you turned it on, the spindle immediately turned, which is interesting. Um, but I guess to be expected. Uh, typically, the part is removable on these. And uh, I did talk to the guys that sent it to me. And they said that it didn't matter. So I'm kind of curious about it. So what I think I might do is I might remove it to see what's going to happen. Um, yeah, cap on there as well. So just watch for that. But I'm going to drop this part off. I'm just going to use um, wick here, which hopefully will work. It should. I do have a really nice solar sucker, but it's in my uh, electronics workshop area of the house, he says. All right, so it's felt like moving, so I'm just gonna pop these off one at a time because the wick never takes off completely. I just want to make sure I don't lift a pad either. I suppose burn myself. And uh, with the the nice solder suck I have, it just completely clears out the holes. But. Uh, yeah, this one's a little tricky because it's got three pins. Come on. It's wiggling up. There's a mechanical force holding it as well. So a little bit more wick. Probably some flux would help. Flux is always good. Also, something to hold down the workplace. But apparently I'm using all my PCB devices to hold power supplies. I can definitely feel it loosening up. The other thing too is this uh, didn't actually come with any <laughs> instructions saying what to connect what to, which was fun, but it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, there we go. So the pot is actually quite tight in there. I just didn't want to pull it out too hard. So the wick had pulled out most of it. So now that it's removed, um, I'm looking at the connector that is here. I, it's a little three pin JST. Um, I don't have any, I actually just picked up two pin ones, but um, so that's typically where you would wire that into. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire the smoothie board, which is still unplugged, into where the pot was. Uh, I'm gonna put the POWM on the center pin and then the ground to the ground. Makes sense, right? 
And if it doesn't make sense, well, it's going to be too late by the time you've seen this because, uh, well, it'll already have happened. So if you're over there going, no, don't do that, realize you're just yelling at a computer screen for no reason. And, of course, you know, it'd be perfectly normal. That's what we all do all the time, even though everything is pretty much in the past by the time it's uh, you're seeing it on the computer. So there we go. It's very rare to do fruit hole soldering. Okay, great. That's in there. Um, I'm going to clip the ends a little bit. Just to be neat. Ugh, giant. Clean it away, make sure none of that goes in there. Okay, so. This is where we think it gets interesting. Because it requires configuration setup. So we've got the motor down there, wires here, PWM a little bit long, hopefully we won't pick up any noise on that cable, I'm sure we will, but let's wrap this up, and I'll probably screw that down or something, <coughs> make sure that nothing is where it's not supposed to be. Okay, check it over. Um, Take out the part, I put the PWM into the center pin of the part and the ground to the uh, ground on the board. And um, we should be good there. So if we're not, we'll uh, do very bad things to that poor smoothie board. And I did verify that the three pins for the JST, which I assume are for uh, to connect PWM single to, are correct. So let's see what happens. Okay, so I turned up the tiny G and the motor again. Um, everything looks okay. The motor is clicking, it's not turning. So, I have the um, chili pepper open and then I use $P1 to look at the frequency. Set to 5000 Hz, 10,000 RPM high, 0 RPM low, phase low 0, phase high 1, CC speed low, 1000 species high. So, I'll probably change those. Uh, and phase off, I'll load them probably better doesn't reverse so so the commands um, to turn on the spindle uh, I believe that's M3 so let's take a look so M3 would turn the spindle on clockwise which I think we want take a look through the excellent tiny G wiki yep so it's M3 um, S parameter should do that. So let's find out if what happens. So we'll load up, go back to Chili Pepper, and we're going to punch in M3 S2000. And so far, nothing. Uh, there's a red light on the <laughs> 3000. Zilch. Oh, the clicking is faster. So that's something. So sorry, 8000. Still clicking is faster, so it just sounds like a primer. 9, 10, yeah. Not sure what's going on, but. So uh, when I was hooking up the spindle to the tiny G already, I couldn't get it to work properly. And then I realized um, the tiny G is 3.3 volts out and this spindle uh, controller looks like it's 5 volt in. There's no marking, no instructions. So I took a quick look around on Google to see what I could find. And sure enough, um, I found a similar looking board with a silk screen of uh, 0 to 5 volts, which is expected. So uh, what I have to do now is put together a buffer um, to convert the 3.3 volts into a 5 volt signal um, and use the 245 for that. I do have some of the little 35 volt um, from Adafruit that I got a while ago uh, that use a you know transistor or 10k resistor, um, but those are too slow uh, for this kind of speed. So it, even though I've got them pre-made, um, so I'm going to knock up a little board in Eagle quick. So uh, I've already got Eagle loaded. 
Um, and what I'm going to do is, even though it's a really simple board, I'm going to pull it out of actually one of the boards I did last year, or this year I guess, for layer one, which uses the same chip, and it's just a neat way um, to copy and paste from Inside Eagle to another project. So uh, this is the the board I'm going to pinch from, and I'm going to go into the schematic. And what I want is this se uh, section here. So I'm going to group that, and I'm going to pick up this guy here, and then I'm going to use the cut command. So I'm just typing in cut uh, on the command line, cut group, and that's all I need to do in this schematic. And now I'm going to go over and I'm going to make a new project. Three bolt to five bolt, okay, and that will go up to the top, and then a new schematic, okay, and then in here I'm just going to paste, pop it down. Uh, it's complaining that um, my classes are set differently to this project to the other project I collected it from, um, and we want to use these as eight mil, eight mil width drill. Um, sorry, uh, for the traces it's a minimum of eight mil and then the others are zero. And this is the class command, we can override them in here. And this is just a way of setting up uh, default sizes, default drill sizes, default clearance uh, for different classes for nets. And they're very handy to use, so. All right, so that's the, the chip is added. So now I just wanna add a, um, a one by three. Uh, I've got a pin header here, I'm gonna use the oval one. This is a little bigger. Pop it onto the board. So three, two, one. Flip it around. Grab another one. And put that on the other side. And that's my the two pins in, pins out. I'm going to use the wire command, and we're going to do center pin in, center pin out. And now we just need to add uh, ground to the VCC. So I'm going to add the ground. I could just copy that one actually. Pop one there, pop one there, back to the wire command. Press uh, escape to break that wire command. And then same for um, VCC, so which I'll add those in a second. VCC, which is just, you know, schematic symbols, just to show. And it's asking me if I want to overwrite them. And I do. So it changed the name. And you can either name it before with a name command and name that wire. And you'll see it's called VCC, which is what we want. Um, same for ground. So we have ground and ground. You notice the chip has, uh, looks like it's ground connected already, but it, it's not. It's it's for the enable, so it's an inverted um, enable. Um, so that means that when it's held to ground, it's, it's enabled. So here we have, we have our uh, free fault uh, in and our five fault out. And they've got odd names right now because they were first, you know, something else. So we can call that five fault out. I'm using the name command again, free fault in, and then that's named our nets. Okay, so that's it now. All you have to do is create the, uh, the schematic side of it now. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to schematic. It wants me to create it, so let's do that. And there it is. Uh, and then I'm going to use the group command to move them into the board. And then the move, group move. Pop it about there. And then I'm make it easier to use, I'm going to bring these in so that we can zoom into it a little bit. Just kind of make it rough size. Okay, and so let's take our input side, which I'm um, right clicking here. Move this to this side. Pop that in the middle. And then this one over here. There we go. Now I can bring in the dimension of the board. Okay. Now when you use the auto zoom, it 
uh, uses that giant name of this uh, 245 as part of the zoom area. So let's get rid of that by using the smash command. So I'll switch to group mode. Smash. Sorry, group. Uh, regroup them. Smash group. And now I can individually delete those text labels. So let's get rid of that one. And that one needs to be be much more visible. And then I can move out some of the silk screen labels a little bit more. I'm not going to use those anyway. So, but just, you know, pretty neat. So let's move that guy too. Okay. So there's the basic layout. Now I'm going to route it. Route command. Uh, this one's just going to go straight across. I want it on the top layer because I'm... Uh, Doing still sided. Um, let's bring this in. Right, this this is our five volt out. Uh, straight across, same deal. Uh, this one here, a little tricky. So there we go. Okay, run a DRC on it. Which we haven't loaded one in yet, so let's just load. Use the seed. Do, 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 do. What have I got here? I got one. IT, it's fine. Check it. It's fine. Okay. So we can add a poly over the top of it as well. So I'll use the poly command. Draw in around the area of the board. Doesn't matter if it goes outside the edge, really. And then we're going to name it. And we're going to name it with ground entire signal. I would always like that one to be default and evil, but it's not. Now, because I'm going to mill it, I'm going to make the edges a little bit bigger, or the gap a little bigger, so I'm going to isolate it a bit more. So let's isolate it by 0 0.01. That's thermals on, orphans are on two. So that just makes a little bit of bigger gap um, around the pads and the wires, just to make it easier to mill. Uh, and that's basically the board. So the next thing you want to do is um, miter the edges so let's see here so i'm going to grab the dimension layer just pop it in a little bit with the miter command make it nice and round there we go and finally save so it's the uh, free volt to five volt run cam processor on it now so I'm gonna pop up the command command open a job uh, I'm gonna use this the spark fund one that I use all the time I think I modified this one to work with Eagle 7.2 which is has a change the drill types has changed so um, I haven't saved that one locally by the looks of it so the one I know I have changed is so there should be one four seven two. So this is one I made for IT. Um, and the difference is that on the drill, there we go. To the drill board outline is that's not the one I want. Where'd it go? Oh, right, very first one. It has X one underscore twenty four instead of um, just X one. Otherwise, the drills end up in the wrong place. So I hit process job. It'll run through them all. Take a look at how they look. Let's see. So I'm going to open up the folder where they are aligned. Okay. So here they are. And then I'm going to look at the ones I want, which is these guys. I'm just going to drag all of them, even the default. Try it into the Gerber viewer here, and there we go. That's our uh, our board. It's single sided, so um, and you can see the silk's not good. But I don't have a silk screen spinner, so that doesn't matter. Uh, all right, next thing to do is uh, to mill it out. You'll notice on the Gerber viewer that it doesn't show the rounded edges, but they will be there when uh, when there because it doesn't. There we go. If I click on this, show outline which never usually works for me, but it has this time, so that's great. Uh, but there we go.
Okay, great. Okay, so now I'm going to mill out the board. Um, so I've got my CNC software open here. Um, these are the files I'm going to load uh, on the top layer, the top, the milling layer for mechanical, which is the you know the router down under the board, and then the drills, uh, which this file here. I'm not sure if I did it properly. And this is the drill type it wants. So let's pop that in and we should get it. So that's it. So now I'm going to import that. And then we can take a look at it. I'm going to move it around a bit. Because I happen to know I have a board on there already. So, so we'll take a look at it. And that's what's going to cut out. I'm going to use the rub out region. Just to make sure it's all processed. So that's it. Um, we've got the insulate bit set for 6 mil, cut set for 50 mil because it's a big 50 mil router bit. Um, okay, next thing to do is actually switch on the CNC now and uh, set it up. And I'm just setting up the machine now um, and letting it the spindle warm up, which it takes about 100 seconds or so. that run. Okay now that's warmed up I'm going to go over and um, change out the bit to a uh, to, to a, uh, I think a 45 or 60 degree end mill. So here I managed to press the mute button on the microphone and didn't realize um, but what I'm doing here is just going through the uh, cam software um, and I think I'm about to run yeah, I'm just positioning the board now so that it's uh, in an area. I'm going to pull up the camera and then take a look at it. I think we're going to run a tool test and make sure that the bit is working. Uh, so to go on to here, then move the camera over that area. Uh, zoom into it. There we go. So the camera is now pointing at that spot on the PCB and we're going to run a tool test. It's going to do a tool change. And then you set the depth of the bit. So we did that already, it's going to come back, it's going to cut out a little cross and then it'll go back and look at it and uh, the camera will hopefully refocus back on it, which I think it will. Uh, and there it is, so it's nice and clean, so we should be good with that. Um, so next what we'll do is, is do the isolation and cut the board out. can take a look at it here that's what's nice about the CNC you can just keep zooming in and uh, and looking at it where it actually is on the board so the camera is, is moving around the PCB there so I'm gonna go out of the CNC mode now and uh, I think I'll make a, another copy of the board so we can print two out just in case uh, so I'm gonna select it all and then fiddle around for, it for a moment while I figure I remember how to do a, yeah a copy uh, so of course it's just select and control C control V uh, not much figuring out there Apparently it's been a while since I've, uh, I've done that. So we'll move it up a little bit so that the center point, uh, which I marked off before uh, with a fiducial. And then I'm going to arrange the boards around there. So there's my second board. Pop that in. And we'll cut two out. The brown line is the router. Uh, the green is the outside area that won't be touched. And that's a rubber area. And rub out basically removes copper from areas that aren't specifically around uh, the wires and stuff. So where, where um, pads and wires are connected, it's it's always going to rub out around those. But it will optimize away areas so that it doesn't see them. Because uh, it, it, if it thinks it's not worth removing the copper from a particular area, the, the machine won't do that. And so what the rub out does is, is say, I want to remove these areas, uh, either to make it easier to build or for other reasons. So, should be going off now. Um, tool change, and we're gonna change the bit. Uh, but it's already set up because we did the test. It's gonna go back over now, and it's gonna start milling out that area. Uh, and there it goes. The update's a little jerky because I'm actually using um, like a Team Viewer thing to 
remote into my CNC and running it remotely um, right across the room. So there it is wiggling around, it's going around the outer edge of the board. Uh, and then it'll come across in a second, you can see the pattern, and there it goes, it'll go into the, and start milling out that area. A little jerky again, it's much smoother on the screen. It's just that, because we're using the remote desktop. So it goes around the wire, um, so it's, it's basically two cuts. And there it goes. I actually recorded a video on my phone um, of some of this going on. It's quite loud and shaky phone, but we'll see how it goes. And I'll add this later on, so you can see the machine running. The machines are almost cool. So now let's go back. We'll switch the camera uh, back over to the board, zoom into it, and take a look and see what it's cut already. So it wants to focus, and there it is, and there it goes, and there it comes back again. Great. Nope, it's not decided yet. And good, there we go. So there's the areas, the green areas are where it's cut out. Um, and you can see that lines up when you move it around. So this is me following the head around with the camera pointing to the board. And you can see it's all nicely cut out. I've got the photo plot resolution set a bit lower, I think. But yep, we just poke around and make sure everything looks like it. Okay, it does. Probably should have tear dropped those uh, pads, but I didn't, so should be okay. Okay, what are we gonna do next? Okay, uh, I think we're going to run the drill. Yep. So this is the drill section now. So it's going to go through and uh, drill in each of those six holes per board. So we've run that. Let's take a look what it did. Focus in on the on the hole, and you can see it's there. Focus in quite perfect. So this is what happens, especially on holes. I think it seems to be have the most problems. But I'm just going to adjust it to a point zero one step and move it down a little bit until it comes into view, so we can see it a little bit better. There we go. And we'll check all the other holes. And they look fine, even though I didn't use the bit. It's a it's a drill bit I typically use for this size, so I just happen to have it sitting there. And there we go. So the brown area is where it's gonna cut out. Now what's interesting about this is that um my wife actually put this PCB down and uh didn't tape under the board so if you write out entirely around like that what's going to happen is it's the board's going to pop out um, with the force of the of the bit spinning around and it's going to break the router bit and it definitely will happen so what needs to happen is you have to um, put a break out into the the routed edge so that it leaves a little tab and doesn't cut it all out so that's what i'm going to do is going to add uh, a little tab here. This software actually has a command to, to do that and it can figure out and just say I'm just going to add a little tab and you can set the size of it. Typically um, I just usually have double sided tape and that works sometimes as better as or worse. I think the tabs are probably the best way to go. Um, you do end up with a slightly unfinished edge but it's very easy to just file it off and make it smooth. Um, and uh, one of the ways you can do it as well is to remove the board and then use the uh, fiducial system that it has for doing double-sided so we can remove the board put the double-sided tape back down again bring it back on again go over the top of a hole uh, line it up to the yellow dots which are the drill holes and it will move and rotate it as it needs to so let's go in here and just add the the breakouts so it needs to select the, the area we want to do breakout insert and there we go it's added a couple they're a little smaller maybe um it's a 50 mil drill bit so i uh, sorry router bit um so let's go in and, and run the setup and see uh, yeah there we go so we'll make, let's make it a little bigger let's make it to 50. and that should be tons it'll keep that securely held while we while the route's finished on both of them 
Okay, back over to the machine setting. This is CNC setting, so we're going to run it now. Um, we have to select the uh, the cutout mode. So we got cut. Go in, and it'll leave that area there. So it'll, only the brown is going to be routed. I think we're good to go. So. I'm going to go over, I've filmed it over here and you can see the machine is, this is where it's cutting out the insulation. Off it goes. I have noticed it's making a, a little bit of a different wine than normal. Um, some belt change, might be time to service it. I've had this machine for a few years and maybe time to send it in for a service or take a look at what's going on. It could also be time to change the wasteboard. And you can see that they're cutting out the insulation. And then we can flip to a second where it's going to do the drills. Uh, I think this is the drill mode. And yep, there it goes, plunging in, cutting each of those. And great. So next step, router and out. So here we are. These are on the machine, you can see the tabs, it came out quite nicely. All they have to do now is just pop them out and that's just a case of squishing them off. And here they are, tabs still in place, just got to file those off. Um, and the next step is actually just to wash it off and clean, next make the board.